Our culture has twisted love so much that we think that love cannot include discipline. Love cannot include any consequences. If you truly love me, there's no consequences to my actions. And so we, we've fallen into this like tolerance mindset, this permissiveness mindset that we give permission for people to do anything all in the name of love. Nothing could be further from the truth. In our culture, we tend to, to think of it as like just giving permission to do whatever you want. Um, parents, unfortunately, do this a lot. Parents, you see parents constantly chasing after their kids, like constantly giving them over and over again time to respond. We say in our house, obedience is immediate obedience. Disobedience, you got to get it right the first time. We want immediate obedience because that's what really obedience is. So you see these parents chasing after their kids, like, come on now, sweetie, you got to do this. Stop it now. I'm going to count to 10. One. Two, meanwhile, a little Chucky doll is terrorizing Walmart, knocking things all over the shelves, right? Four, five. <laughs> He's like a little Chucky doll terrorizing everything. I got a few more seconds, right? Nine, nine and a half, right? And that's the dad. That's the dad talking. He's frustrated. He's talking. But, but we got to understand that discipline has to involve correction. You can't segregate the two. You know this to be true as parents. If you see your kid going down the wrong path, what do you do? The most loving thing that you could possibly do for your kid is to go over and do some course correction, to not allow them to wander any further because you know that would be to their own detriment. The writer of Hebrews talks about this in Hebrews chapter 12. You'll see this on the screen. Hebrews 12, it says this, And have you forgotten that the exhortation that addresses you as sons... My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary. Don't get tired of it when reproved by him. Get this, for the Lord disciplines the one he loves. That's so important. The, The Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Verse 9 says, besides this, we have an, we've had an earthly fathers who have disciplined us and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the father of spirits and live? For they discipline for us a short time as it seemed best to them. Catch this. But he, God, disciplines us for what? Our good. Like it's for our good that we feel the discipline of the Lord. It's for our good that we, we feel convicted when we read the scriptures and we're like, ah, I shouldn't be doing that. It's for our good that he does it. Why? So that we may share in his holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. You know that. If you were a kid, you know that, right? It's not like someone gets spanked by a spoon. It's like, ooh, that felt good, right? Do it again. No one does that. No one does it. It's because it's not pleasant. It's painful. But later, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. I think one of the things that we need to understand from Scripture is that God is a good dad. Wouldn't you say amen to that? We have a good, good father. We have a good dad, which is why rather than allow us to continue to pursue disobedience and destruction, he provides correction. And sometimes that's painful, but it's always for our good. If I could kind of say it like this in a nutshell, I would say it like this. The hardship produces the harvest. Bottom line is the hardship that we go through that that is in the realm of discipline produces the harvest of righteousness that God wants to develop in our lives. The hardship produces the hardship 